Hello everyone. Uh welcome back. I am Sajad and um is everything working? It sure is. Hi, uh so yesterday or I think it was the day before that, uh we were working on meta programming in, in Rumi. Uh and today I have some very good news. We are finally at the stage where we can actually write programs that can parse themselves. And uh, in front of me is, is one of those programs right now, and I'm going to show you how it works in just a second. But um, yeah, so we are halfway done with our goal, and um, today I am going to start working, start enabling the program to do much more than what it can already do. Right? So let me show you something. This. Um, this right here, uh, actually, let's do something like that. Right. So this right here is a very basic program that is using metaprogramming to parse itself. You can see that, well, it's, it looks like a normal function. Um, if I show you something else, you see, it, it looks like a main function. It has a return statement, everything, right? But there is a catch. And that is that um, these statements are just there. They aren't part of the Ruby programming language directly. And this program is enabling itself to parse them. And how do, how do we do that? Well, we, we have a compiled directive that is registering two parsers, a high parser and a complex rule parser for this program. Um, For this program and um, we do that and the program will then re recognizes these uh, parse rules and then uh, applies them on the rest of the program so for example let's look at the high parse rule the high parse rule uh, has an id parser and it parses ids and checks to see if they are uh, if they return high, and if so, it would accept them as a high parse rule. Now, with that done, uh, it can generate any code it wants for uh, high keywords. And here, for example, we create an, an f call statement, uh, a function call, and we set it to printf, and we set the value to hello world from many levels deep, and then we return that to be replaced with the high keyword. The other rule that I have is called a complex rule, which looks for an ID that is starting with uh, say, right? And uh, if it finds that, it is going to capture the rest of the, um, the, the ID and replace it with another function call that prints it. So with all that done, this program, uh, when compiled, and let me do that. So, oh god, um, I changed a bunch of things here uh, that we probably shouldn't have. I'm gonna revert those changes and then try again. So, you see, it does a bunch of things, and now if I run it, it is going to say hello world from many levels deep, and you define such as. Which is like um, completely weird and bizarre, but also I really like it, like how this comes together. And now um, I am hoping to work to you know, give this. Uh, a lot more things to do because only now only you can just create function calls, right? But we want to be able to do much more when parsing, uh, when metaprogramming Rumi. And yeah, so that's where we are. Uh, how's everyone doing? How are you guys today? Is my connection stable? Right. So let's begin. And. Um, what I really want to do first, first actually, let me just move these out of the way. These were helpful functions uh, to work with the strings, and I'm going to 
move them here. That's fine. Right, so here is what we kind of have at the moment. It's a, it's a compiler uh, import statement. And the way we handle that is by registering by registering a callback. So for example, you can see this function, compiler AST, uh, it is being replaced with this one using the AST callback. And the AST callback can basically do whatever we want in C++, and that's the bridge between the two worlds, right? So, so that's where we are at the moment, and uh, we just want to define a lot more of these functions and, you know, keep going with that. Right. Taking a sip of my coffee. Right, so one question, one, um, not question, but one of the problems that I have is that um, currently at this stage, you have to import all of these uh, functions if you want to do metaprogramming and that might not be something that you want to do so to work around that I am going to come here and I'm going to say so if you didn't find F well if you did find F do all this other stuff and if you didn't find F well tough luck um, yeah Let's format that. Great. Um, no. Okay. So hopefully this is correct. Uh, if not, we are going to get a bunch of compilers. But yeah. So um. So let's start with that, and uh, I'm going to create a new module in Rumi for the first time. I'm going to call it the AST module. Uh, I've already started with two or three things. Now, um, this program is currently using a very basic approach of telling the compiler I want this AST, create that AST for me. I don't really want to do that. Instead, I'm going to ask the compiler to um, So I don't really want to do that. Instead, I want to ask the compiler to provide set information for us. For example, um, instead of calling if call is this, I'm going to say C dot uh, or rather, c that gets a call, and here we, we would capture the f call instead of relying on strings because we can error check these uh, literals, but we can't do these ones. So yeah, so that's where we are heading, um, and of course uh, the c f call would have certain properties as well. For example, it would, instead of using something like set uh, or add argument s, you would have f call f call dot add add s. As you can see, this is more you know, we can deal um, we can handle errors here in a better way in comparison to this one, right? Right. So let's start and. Uh, I'm going to start with the uh, function call because that seems to be the easier thing here. And uh, so the AST is going to import compiler on its own because you know we actually do need it. Right. And um, so we have a function call. Uh, and first of all, we want to be able to get it. So I'm going to say compiler that. Uh, Create f call is a method, right? And you capture, let's say, what does f calls constructor actually look like? Um, we don't have a constructor here, so you, you actually capture nothing. 
and you will turn a, point, a pointer to a compiler f call. We don't need to write any code for it because this is going to be binded to another method. And that's, you know, we would like to handle it elsewhere. Right. Right. Uh, okay. Now, um, the function call has two properties, ID and argument. So we need to do something like this. Um, get ID, which would return a, a string for us. And also, we would like to have get arg, which gets an index, and return uh, an expression for us, an expression pointer. Right? Well, uh, a C underline expression, basically. And finally, we want to have the set of statements. So for set ID, you provide a string. Uh, like this, and you don't get anything back. Oh, this is going to be problematic. You have to do it like that, right? And last but not least, we have uh, add r, which gets an a pointer to an expression and return the unit, right? So Basically, we have to go around and create these functions for different things. And yeah, this is going to be fun <laughs> in the most inaccurate way possible. But yeah, so how, how are you guys doing? Is everything all right? Uh, anything interesting, even more fun? No? Right. Right. Um, so. To do these, we have to come and register callback for them, and this could be f call. So register callback. Uh, what? So what's the name? The name would be c on your own f call. First of all, the name would be compiler dollar sign create f call. So let's just start with that. Compiler dollar sign create f call. Replace that with compiler dollar sign create f call replace and then uh, these would be create f call right so that's that we have to create that function of course but for now we can keep moving next we have to register callback for uh, callback for c f call dollar sign get id and we do that by calling cf call dollar sign get id replace and we create well we do f call get id like so and then we do the same thing uh, with get add Get ag and get ag with a capital G. Then we have the EF call dollar sign. Uh, call is like that. Dollar sign set ID, which for which we are going to call. Um, Replace and see if uh, well f call that ID and finally we have f call at arg and here would be um, instead of set ID replace would be add arg replace and this would be add arg right. So, so this is this is going to be our workflow for uh, you know defining the ASTs, and we have to go through all of our ASTs and all of our parsers. Um, right. So, starting with create a call, I'm going to define it here. 
right above here. Right. So the creative call should actually re return an if call star and it's going to be called uh, create function call. You don't have any input in the return new f call. That's all. The get id should return a char star, and it was called f call get id. So, uh, actually, this isn't uh, a null statement. This would be uh, a void star c which is a pointer to our compiler right and here we we, we are empty we get um, an f call basically so with the void star f c which we can convert to an f call by doing this uh, f call star f c and then we can return f call dot id no f call ID dot C S T R and there is there's that so we can just convert that to char star and that's done. That's how you get your ID and to get the expression we do the same thing so expression star f call gets uh gets argument void star of C and an integer i. So we have to capture our f call like this and then say return fc dot uh, args, is it? No, return f call, sorry. f call args dot at i. Like so. And there is a potential that it is going to return an error, but we don't care. Right? If there's an error, you're going to receive zero. So that's fine. Now for the set ID and not add args. Expression star. If call set ID. So you get your that and you get this one. And all you have to do is do that and then say okay fc uh well first of all this is actually void set fc that id is a std string from this id uh std string with the lowercase s and this would be f call again why am i writing fc yeah, so, so that would be our ref call. Uh, I guess we have the add arg as well, but that's easy to write, so let's quickly do that. So ref call, add arg, you get a expression star exp, and you do ref call dot arg dot push at back exp. All right. I guess we can have uh, something like f call that uh, insert at or something like that, but let's just ignore that for now. Uh, we can we can always come back and add it later. Right. So this is for f call, and we have a pretty similar thing going on um, with oh, they do. We have a pretty similar thing going on with f call statement. They are essentially the same thing. Only one of them is an expression; the other one is a statement. So I am going to copy paste all of this. Um, right. And instead of f call, I'm going to say f call stmt and do that everywhere. So, uh, there. I think the, the rest is the same, right? So you have your get id, get r, set id, add r. Yes. Now, uh, the code should be written in a very similar fashion. So we can just copy this one again. Let's write that these are a call. 
and then next we can say f call a statement is these ones now you have to change your name with two of all statements everywhere uh f call statement so f call statement get id f call a statement get arg f call statement set id and f call a statement add arg now with that done uh these should all be call statements and then we are going to capture the underlying um because because f call statements um rely on their underlying f call so you can just do that and that should be everything i guess Copy that, paste it here, do it a bunch of times. Okay. Um, I guess we have to change the arrow with a dot, but that's fine. There. And also there, and also there, and also there. Right. So this is exactly the same thing as before, only for f call statements instead of actual f calls. Now we have to f call stmt. You have to register all of those functions. The create function call stmt, create function call stmt. Right now, uh. These should all have a CMT here. These should have an STMT here, an STMT here, an STMT here, uh, here, through here, through here, through here. And that should be everything uh, except actually having it to the parentheses as well. So no f call statement get id f call statement get arg f call statement set id and f call statement add right and I see that this should be lowercase and probably here as well yeah right so so that's the f call statements and uh yeah so next we have the uh the, the strings see a string here means um constant string so we have to create oh come on compiler create the a string so you capture nothing and you return a pointer to a c a string and uh, the C, C a string has a get value method that returns a string and it has a set value that captures a string and returns nothing like so. So we have to write three functions uh for the constant strings so let's do that and then you're basically done uh for the test program that we wrote we can we can convert a test program to this approach and then we can go from there right so c the constant strings so we i'm gonna write the first one based on this one so we Compiler create the string with that and create that. Now uh, register a new callback for the underlying C string uh, string 
color sign get value and we want that to be replaced with this one and your function is d string um get value and basically the same thing for sets so it will be s this could be this as well and this would be s as well right so to create the functions uh again we come up here maybe i can do something like this um yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Right, so so we, we need to do a um, so create the a string. It should be a, um, a string pointer create c string. You get your c uh, here. And you return new string with nothing inside. Like so. And as for get value, we can just do so you have to return a char star for that C string get value, and you are getting a string star. Uh sorry. Yes, you're getting a string star. I don't know why I didn't just do it like that up there as well. That's fine. So you get an string star, and you are going to say uh, return s dot value dot c star, and you are going to convert that to char star. Finally, uh, c string set value with uh gets a string star s and a char star value and you're going to say your ideal value should be this one like so uh i noticed this is capital t and it should be lowercase t and that's fine right so if i compile do i get any compile errors i hope not That is being compiled. Okay, now we can we can replace our uh, let's see. We can come here in the in the Gen AST rule. So we get out of call, but we do it this way. Uh, see that what was it called again? Create a fall or something. Create a fall, right? See that create f call, and instead of doing that, we say f call that set id print f, and there. So the string would be c that create c string, like so. Um. We don't care about that at the moment and then here we said sets value would be like so and then f call dot add arg would be like so now uh the only problem that i immediately see is this is an f call and we need an f call statement so let's uh, stmt one stmt right and that should be uh, how we write it, and you can see we, we are dealing with a lot less uh, stringified things. And so, you know, the only the only really one is this one, but you know, we can deal with that. That's not a big deal. We can deal with that later. Now, uh, the same thing has to be done here. So, f call would be would come from c that create f call statement. We don't need to print it. We can say f call that sets id to printf. And 
the string would be c dot create c string and you can set your value like so and you can add arguments like so so this would be the exact same program um if you compile it and find method create f call stmt uh oh i forgot to import it okay so import ast uh we can get rid of that the under expression is not a type sure we can define it as a type c underline expression is now a struct what else put and parse file at that index ah come on so um yeah okay we don't find function what function could we find We can find function. Who is producing that error? Search couldn't find function. Let's see. So f call is producing that error. Oh wait, uh wait, wait, wait. So if you're getting that error, it means that um probably the code generated by one of these is not accurate. So uh, maybe set ID isn't working. Let's trace that. So uh, here in the f call statement set ID, I am going to see. Uh, I know this is really ugly, but bear with me. Calling set ID with ID. Um, std string ID std and line like so let's see uh, what is being called here and um, probably we made a mistake somewhere maybe maybe this doesn't work and if so we'll, we'll have to figure it out no that's fine Calling set ID with ID printf, so that's completely fine. You know what? It is this one. God damn it. This should have an uh, location behind it. Uh, like so, and these all should be arrows instead. So that and that and that and probably that one and this one because you're creating a copy of the function call statement right yes you're creating a copy of the function call statement and we aren't actually doing something so, so this this should be fixed now let's see if it actually works Compile. Right. So it compiled and it actually worked the same way, which is great. So now uh, we have to do that for all of our ESTs. And uh, I'm looking forward. To it. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Okay, so let's. Let's do that. And so this is how I'm going to do. I'm going to go through my ASD folder and deal with those one by one. There aren't that many files here. Uh, so that's, yeah. 
We have some files, but you know, it's not that much. We can deal with that. Right. Right. So let's start with the address. Um, I'm going to open you here. So what do we have in address? And let's actually try to organize this in a similar fashion as well. So this would be C address. We create an empty struct. Now we have uh, an exp, and that's all that we have, right? So so we need to do create address like so. And we need to do C address dot get exp, which would return you a the expression and the address that sets exp, which would capture an expression. So exp, which is a pointer to a C x expression and it will return unit there so that's the first one next uh do you want to do it right now no i don't want to do it right now so uh we have our address uh let's see we have arg so the argument is a struct again what do you have we have a id and a type we need four functions compiler that creates arg gets nothing because the constructor is empty and returns a pointer to a c arg like so and c arg dot set id captures uh an id of a string and returns nothing and set type captures a c type and returns nothing so we have to define c type here right next we do the same thing for get id which captures nothing and returns a string and uh, for get type that captures nothing and returns a pointer to C type. I guess this should be a pointer to because we don't deal with these directly, never, because, you know, we don't really have something to, to deal with there. Right. Um, so that's art. Uh, next, we have assign. And notice that the sign actually has a constructor, so that is going to mean something else. Let's see. So we have C assign, which is a struct, and we have this uh, compiler that creates a sign. So we want to do this one and we want to say okay uh the the constructor is an empty so we, we probably should do something like uh c expression star base and c expression star e something along those lines now we can say this that gets base i'm gonna lazy and you get a c expression in a very similar fashion you can set base which you get a uh, for which you provide a pointer to an expression and you capture you get nothing back in return right finally you have Get e the expression and a 
set exp. Okay, so these are the functions for assign. I think we have anything else. No. Right. Binary operator. This is going to be fun. We have to do this for all of these functions. And then that's just a sub one. How long have you been up? 43 minutes. Okay, that's good. We can keep going for now. Um, but soon I need to take a break. Right, so the A's are done. Now let's do C mean op, which is a struct. Now we have compiler create bean op, and notice that the constructor is an empty, so we have to capture all of those. We have LHS, which is a pointer to an expression. We have op, which is a string, and we have rhs, which is a pointer to another expression, and you, in return, get a pointer to c binary operator, like so. And now, uh, you have set and get for all three of those, so get lhs, you provide nothing, you get a c expression, uh, c underline expression, c underline expression, right. Oh, and here, that's a, that's bad. Base is a pointer to that. And exp is a pointer to that. Right. Now, we have get, get LHS. We have the same thing for RHS. And we have a very similar thing for OP. Now, for set... We have set oh, dot set LHS which captures LHS with a as a C expression and returns the unit like so. Yeah. Now this would be RHS and uh OP, I guess. In the case P, OP is just this string. Right, that's binary operators. And uh, next we have cast. Again, uh, we don't have an empty constructor, so we have to deal with that. C cast is a struct. We have our create cast method that captures an expression, the expression and a type, right, and returns a the cast. Right, this should be compiler. Now, uh, what do we have? We have get type we have get exp we have set type oh god damn it i keep putting semicolons there right and set exp which is like so okay. yep so so this allows us to to deal with cast as well next we have code block yay Right. So, how does code block look like? 
uh, C code block is an empty struct again. Well, it's not really an empty struct, but the the rule around time doesn't need to know about its, its details, so we're just going to say it's a uh, right. Now, um, how do we look? Well, the constructor is empty. I, I realize. And we only have a statement, so which is really good. So we have uh, a compiler that create code block like so. Now we have code block dot uh, add statement. I want to say, how did we deal with that? We added add our grep. So add statement. And you capture a C statement and you return nothing. Next, you have code block dot get statement for which you capture an integer and you get back a C statement. We probably need more than these two. For example, I'm guessing we need a get something like a, an index get a delete operator, you know, things like that. But for now, that's fine. For now, that's all that we need to do. Right, so that's code block. Then we have const bool. So const bools are really simple. So c const bool is another struct compiler that create const bool. Now here we get a boolean value and we incorporate it in c const bool, whatever way it might be. And we do a pretty similar thing for um, We don't really need a set, but I'm going to create one just to be consistent. Cons, not constant. Right. Just to be uh, consistent across. So we get get and we get set. But I, I, I really doubt that we, we actually need those two. But just to be consistent across, right? Okay. Um, next. So that's the bool, and you have const int. Right, so C const int is a struct. Now, compiler that create, you know what? I'm going to copy these. Uh, replace bool with int and replace this bool with int as well. There we go. That's constant. Just double checking. Yes. Right. Now we have define. Now I really, I'm really excited about define because it opens up a lot of possibilities for us, and it's always fun to deal with that. So, side right like this, I guess. So C define compiler that create define. Notice how the constructor is an empty. So we shouldn't be empty here. Now, what do we get? We get an ID, we get an exp, which is, I guess, optional, but you know, uh, capital C expression, and we get a type, which that is also optional. The uh, common type. Now, what do you get in return? You get a C define. You don't care about how you implement it, but yeah. So, uh, C define that gets ID, capture nothing, I return a string. Let's repeat that three times. So, gets type, 
and get exp here you get a pointer to c type here you get a pointer to c expression just like that now we have to do the set so set id ID which is a string and you get nothing in return. Repeat that three times. Uh, type and exp. Right. So for type we say pointer to C type and for exp we say pointer to C expression. Now uh, I'm going to pause it for a second here. Uh, I'm going to be back very soon and then we can continue with the development. So, thank you for waiting.
Okay, I'll uh, be back. Sorry for that. Thank you for waiting. Uh, so yeah, uh, we were we were creating different ASTs and we just defined the defined AST. Next up, we have the directed AST. Now I'm not sure if that's a good idea or not, um, but you no, know, I'm going to give the user the the option to work with them, just because doing anything else would be, you know, I shouldn't decide what the what the user does with Rumi, uh, so I should provide everything that I, the user might need. So. What I'm going to do is I am going to give the user the option to say something like uh, define new directives. Now, even if it, it is basically meaningless because you're already in a directive, we're just going to add it. Right. So uh, that's our directive, and the compiler should be able to create one. So create directive. Now, realize how the constructor isn't empty, so we shouldn't leave this empty here. Uh, we have the directive ID and the directive AST, which would look something like this, uh, AST, C, AST. Now, in return, you get your directive. Um, now, we need two accessors and two setters. So, the directive that get ID would return a string. And let's actually copy that for get AST, which would return a pointer to a compiler AST. Now, we need our setter method as well. So uh, set ID, which would capture a string here and return nothing in return. And set AST, which is pretty similar. So AST, the pointer to CAST returns nothing. That's the directive, and we will connect this to this method later. Next, we have a function called, we have already done that. We have function. So let's move past the function calls. Right. The function has a lot of different things, actually. So we have two getters, ID and return type. And we have two arrays that we have we need to deal with. So let's see. Um, I am going to say we have a C function, which is again an empty struct. We don't need to think about that too much. We have our create function, which gets nothing and returns a pointer to a C function. Uh, next. The, we should have a get ID that does this and a get return type that does this. We also need to have a um, get STMT. Here we capture the integer and an index as well, essentially. So yeah, and a get argument right. So we have four getters and probably four setters as well. So let's copy that. Paste. We have set ID. We have set return type. We have add statement and add arg. So here uh, you capture the string and you return unit. Come on. Here you capture. Uh, can I do this? Yes. And you return unit. Here there is no index, so and you capture a stmt like so, and you return a unit. Uh, do that and 
add. Right, so these are our getters and setters for a function, essentially. Oh, that's a lot. But I guess functions are the most complex thing that we have. Right, I don't think we have anything more complex than functions. Well, we have methods, but... Right. There's that. Um, we have function signatures. Now, they are pretty similar to functions, so I'm tempted to do this. And then just replace every function with function sig. Does this work? I mean, it should, right? Right, and we don't have a statement, so we can get rid of those two. We don't have, oh, I guess we don't have an ID either, so let's get rid of that one and this one. Oh, wait, wait, wait. we do have IDs. Sorry about that. Uh, aside from that, we also have the var i boolean, so we, sh we should do that one as well. So function seek that is var i. You return a boolean, and also set var i, which does that. That looks okay. Uh, right. Now we have also function type. The difference, the difference between function signature and function type is that this is a statement and this is not. Right. I really, really hate it. They are essentially the same thing. Right, so replace that with function type. Let's let's just do this. Right, we don't have ID, so let's get rid of those and uh, return type we do are we do. Right, so here another difference. Uh, I guess in the previous one. Function signature, these were of type arg, but function type is of type type, of course. So we have to change this to type. Mm -hmm. uh, return type get arg is where set, set return type, add arg, and set var arg. Right, now. Uh, Do that. That should be everything for function type. Next, we have the if statement. Oh, this is going to be a treat. This is so powerful. We can do so much different things, so many different things with the if statements. So uh, the C if is an empty struct. Come on. And we have create if. Right. So this is an empty again, and we have to provide all of the things that we need. So exp is a C expression. Uh, st1 is a C statement, and st2 is a C statement as well. And you return pointer to C if, like so. This is wrong. That is wrong too. Okay. Now, uh, as for getters and setters, we have three getters and three setters. So, get exp, I want to say, and you return a C expression, and get st1. For which you return a C statement. And I'm going to just copy that and replace it with ST2 for the second one. 
Now, as for the setters, uh, we have set exp, which do something like this. Uh, right. And set the statement one is just going to be statement c statement. The statement two is like that. So, yeah, that's our if. The most powerful statement ever. Uh, we also have import interface. A lot, a lot of things. So, import. Well, so C import. Um, uppercase I. I guess we only have. Um, Again, I'm going to pro let the user do anything if they want because if I dis if I think about things that they shouldn't be doing, I'm just restricting the user from doing genius things, right? And we don't want that to happen, so we're just going we're just going to let them do anything they want to do. So create import um, path which is the string, and you do that now. You have a get path like so, and a set path. Right. Right. Next, we have interfaces. I guess these are. Ah. Well, I guess you have to, right? There's no, there's no real choice here. So interfaces, we have methods and ID. Uh, this truck is an internal thing. Don't worry about it. These are all internal. Don't worry about it. And yeah, so constructor is empty, right? No, the constructor has an ID. Okay. So C interface is a, a struct again. Now we have a compiler that create interface with an ID, which is a string and returns nothing. Now, what we actually have here is um, C interface that get ID like so and Come on, get method. Now, notice this this isn't an integer, so we have a string as the key and a function signature as the output. So the key is a string, and the output is a function to a compiler function signature, like that. We also have uh, interface dot set ID, which works something like that. Units, come on. And we have our set method that captures a key and an ID, like so. Sorry, a key and a, uh, a function signature. Sorry, what am I talking about? Um, and fs, which is a pointer to a function sig. Right. So this could be really useful. For example, you can have a you can define a at sign print directly that would define a print for your struct, and you can go to the internals here. Right. Right. Um, now, um, we are approaching the end of the list. <laughs> the very list. We can see the end here, so it's going to be done real soon. Mem access. So we have mem access, which is a struct. Now. We have our compiler create mem access. Uh, realize how it's not an empty construction, so we are not going to be empty. 
say C expression and here is a ID and you get a C man access in return. Right. Now uh, we have a mem access that gets ID for which you get a string back and mem access that gets exp for which you get a c expression back now you also have mem access that set id like so and mem access that set exp which will work like so Right, that's all we need to do with them and access. Now we have named the type right. So C named type is a struct. You have your uh, compiler that creates named type. You get a name as an ID, and you get a C name type in return. Now you have a getter and setter for the ID. I'm gonna just copy these two and change this to name type because that's essentially the same thing, right? Yes. Now you also have a pointer type. And this is this is where things are getting interesting. We are we are actually creating AST for various different types, uh, as well as you know a statement and expressions in the same go, which would really be useful. Now, a pointer type, a compiler pointer type, again is an empty struct. We don't really want to have internals here. So we are just going to use it as a pointer, right? Now we are going to say compiler that create pointer type and so the constructor only gets a type as the input so we do the same thing here this would be a c type and you get a pointer type in return you also have a get type and a set type that that looks okay to me yes it is right um we also have our pre op So, the compiler POP is a struct, struct like that. Um, come on. Right. And uh, we need that compiler to be able to create them. And the creation type requires an OP, which is a string, and an expression, which is a C expression and you in turn get a c p o p now we have accessors get op which turns a string and get exp which returns a c x expression for you this is getting boring for me <laughs> Uh, right. So set OP would be something like this. And I should really think of some way to automate this process. 
Uh, I mean, it's only one time, and I'm almost done. Today's stream is basically a cleanup session. Right. Now, we have primitive type. That, that's a lot. So... We need to actually have a way of doing this better, but for now, we have a C primitive type, which is a struct, and we have a compiler that creates primitive type. Now, we actually require to have a type enum. We don't have access to that. So what we are going to do, we are going to treat it as an ID for now. Um, and we can deal with that later. I really don't care for now what how we handle that. Uh, get key. Let's actually uh, this should be key as a string. So uh, that right. So how does get key work? Well, you get the string. For now, you know, I'm going to add a to do here because we, we actually need to have enums there, uh, and I haven't added enums yet. That's our primitive types. Next, we have a pointer value. We're almost done. Almost. The pointer value, which is a struct. And uh, don't, didn't we have something else that has X value thingy? No? Um, I guess cast. So this would be pointer value that get into the exp, or uh, let's call it etr. But you know, it's an expression. Now we have a compiler that create pointer value which captures an exp like so and returns a cptr value right that should be everything yes mm. Just going to double check something. Right. Um, Okay, so there's that. Um, right, that's pointer value. And next, we have return statements. Uh, they are pretty simple too. We can actually copy, we can reuse all of this. So we have a ret, this return, I guess. Let's just call it return. So we have create return. It captures an expression and does a return um this will be uppercase p okay and we also have getters and setters and th these are called exp in this case that's the return statement so we can actually create returns here um 
it should be PTR, not PRT. And yeah, so that's return. Next, you have size of. This is really similar to uh, return, only we have types instead of expressions. So I'm going to just copy paste this again and call it size of. Um, so size of, size of, we have get type in set type. Here you get a type in return and you set a type here. Right. And here we get a size of. Imagine if you called size of and you got a uh, return instead. That would be chaos. Right. Uh, next, we have state uh, strings, we, which we have already done. And after that, we have a struct. And then we are almost done. We have two more to go. Right. So we have C struct, which is an empty struct. <laughs> That's weird. Uh, so we don't. We should create a struct on our compiler, and we have we need to have an ID. Right. So there's a thing here that I'm worried about. Um, also, some other thing that is worrisome. So we need to handle adding methods somehow. Also, we need to handle interfaces and. Uh, structs. So I'm just gonna add those to do's there so I can come back and re revisit them. Right? Okay, so we create a struct and now we can get ID, set ID, and members. So C struct that get ID would give you a string and get members, get men member you need to provide an index and in return you get a c define this should be uppercase mm -hmm. now you also have the option to set id uh, for which you provide a string you get nothing back and you have also add member for which you need to give us a define um, and you get nothing back in return. Right, uh, I messed up, so this should be uppercase and this should also be uppercase. Right, that's our struct. We have variable value. It's just a variable access, so that's easy to handle. C variable is a struct compiler. Uh, let's call it variable access or variable value. Whatever. Create variable value. You get an ID and you get a C variable value, like so. Now you have the option to set ID. In which you don't get anything back and actually get ID for which you get a string back. Finally, we have while, which is our final thing. Uh, okay. So while has C while is an empty struct. You have compiler that create while. Now nah, this is an empty, so we shouldn't be empty. We get you have a expression and a statement, and you return get a C while. Uh, what else? So C while you need to have getters for those. So get condition 
and you will get a C expression in return and uh, a get statement, STMT, we abbreviated that, and you get a C statement. I guess that's correct. Uh, you also have your set condition. Which is an expression, and you get nothing back, and you have your set a statement, which you get your thing back. So you have your um, STMT statement, and you get nothing back. Right, that's that's all of our ASTs written in Rumi. That was a lot. I'm not gonna lie. So let's see if you have any typo. We probably have more than one. C type is another type, right? C type lowercase. Okay, here. A statement is another type. Okay, uh, C statement. Right, AST. Okay, C AST. There. ID is another type. Okay, where could you give me a line? Uh, ID is not a type. Where have I used that? I guess we can do something like this. Okay, yeah. A string is not a type. A string, okay. That's a typo. A string. There. Pointer type is not a type. Pointer type. Yes, it should be C on the line. Pointer type. Thank you. A string. Okay. A string. There you go. Primitive type. Seriously, that that should be. Okay. Sure. C expression. It should be expression. Okay, and ah, oh, come on, another one. Expression. So that's all of our typos and the. Uh, the segmentation fault is actually because these definitions are empty. So we have to we have to work around that. And the way I'm going to do that is actually by starting it and going through them one by one. Like a true champion. <laughs> so let's just start with the address, I guess. Uh, going up. So oh. we have our function call, and we have address. Let's say that this is the AST. I don't care if even if that's even or not. Um, no, I don't know. Right. So, uh. Okay, and then right, not that easy one. Okay. Um, the address. Uh, we need to have a create address. So add press a star create address. You get a void C, and you return new address. Uh, new address like that and also import it. Address. I'm sure I'm making a typo here. 
is the Wait, the address isn't empty? You get the expression, okay. That is good to know. Right, so you also get a expression star exp, which you pass to here. Now, uh, you have your Get the XP, which is easy, you just do expression star address get exp and you get uh, an address as your input and you return a dot exp just like that. Oh no. Address set exp is also not that hard. You you get the, an address pointer because it's a method, and you also get your argument, which is an expression. So you have a dot exp equal exp. That's it. No need to do anything crazy here, and that is actually the address. All right, we just have to register it. Yes, we can do that. Let's do all those at once. Okay. So next we have arguments. Let's include them. Yes, the ag age. Right. So we have an ag star create ag, which is a void C, and you return a new ag like that. Next, we have uh, so you have your char star. So strings are different because we internally we are using C plus plus strings, but Rumi doesn't have C plus plus strings, and we need to convert them to C strings or Rumi strings, if you, if you will. <laughs> and yeah, so we have to do some shenanigans here, and to make it easier. I'm even going to do something. Uh, I'm going to define to do CS steering uh, S, which is going to say car store S dot the SDR, and we define a uh, this should be str to csdr, this should be csdr to str, and here we do this std string s. Okay, I mean, it should be. Right, so for example, here, um, let's move these up. With them put them here. Okay, so uh, anywhere we are dealing with a car star, I guess this should be, this could be like that, right? This could be like that. So key, we're using key. Ah, never mind. We don't care about that at this point, really. Um, let's do it like that because these functions are temporary, and we are going to remove them soon. The you know they were just a temporary thing. Uh, yeah, especially this one. We don't even we don't even really need that, right? Um, just gonna 
change that them as you go along. Now this one is actually very really important, so let's do that properly. We do this one, uh, we parse the keys, which is fine. And uh, yeah, here we have What's P? It's a parse rule, so let's actually do it like this. Parse rule star PR. There we go. CC should be CC star CC. So you should change that to CC like so. S is actually a source, so let's change that as well. You don't need that anymore. And that's it. Right. Uh, this would be a AST star AST directly. Right? Yes. These would be a. This is a AST star directly as well. So AST star AST. But again, we don't need. You don't need these anymore. These are just these were just for test, right? Now this is a different result. There's parse results, point of PR, and you don't need to, to say to this string whatever. We can say uh, CSTR to STR of C key. Uh, we have a semicolon there, seriously? Yeah. We'll put the semicolon in there. Right, uh, that's that. These are, these are okay, I guess. Um, that's okay, and yeah, right. So, here again, um... Right, so we were dealing with ag um, get ID and get a ag star ag, right? So this, this could actually, let, let's change this one as well. So this is a cc star cc and this is a cc star cc. Right, so how do we get the CS string will say str to CSTR and to the ag ID. Return this. Right. Next we have um, get type. So type star ag get type ag star ag and you return ag uh, type. I think it's type underline, is it? No, it's type. For the set ID and set type, we have ag set ID that has a, uh, you get an ag as an input and a care star ID. And you're going to see ag ID is CSTR to STR ID. Right? Should be correct. Uh, as for ag set type, oh, this should be uppercase T. You get your ag star ag and your type star T, and you're going to say ag that ag that type is T. That's all of the ags. Okay. So next we have the assign. And the way to handle that would be to say include ASD assign the H assign. Come on. 
assign star create assign in which you capture an expression star base and an expression star exp you return new assign base and exp right as for get and set well expression star get base well the assign get base and you get an assign star you return a base right what's it called base xpr okay you do the same thing for uh exp and this would be expression right as for the set well it's a void assign set base so you get your sign and your expression and you do a that base expr is e right and uh this would be set exp and this would be expression like so now these are the callbacks for those items and that's okay next up we have the binary operators this is not what i had in mind for today now something that i'm realizing so yeah so here we have capitalized o but there we don't so let's 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 convert that to capital o all around and also though there as well i guess right so uh you have your bin op in op you get your expression star lhs your st your car star op and your expression star rhs and you return new in op from lhs op and rhs this is going to be an error Then we say uh, CSTR to SDR OP. Okay. Now uh, we need to have our get LHS, which we can do by writing expression star in OP get, get LHS, and you get your in op star bo and you return bo dot lhs you have the same thing for rhs uh -huh. and a very similar thing for op uh, except this is actually care star and this is like that and this is str to csdr like so just double checking everything yes yeah, so the, the get the get statements are correct now we have to write the set of statements for them um so we have void being op set lhs in op star bo expression star lhs and then bo lhs is lhs copy that two times so this could be r r oh come on and r and set op is very similar again lowercase p come on man And you get your uh, char star op. So you say bo dot op is 
CSTR to STR OP. Done. That's our binary operations. And then we have our cast. So there we go. Let's see if I did that correctly. That should be correct, right? Just second guessing myself. Because that's what we do best. Let's actually try this one as well. I'm not sure if you can, if you can hear the music. I just added it. I hope that's okay. Uh, yeah. That's a good thing to have, right? Okay, so let's continue. I'm getting off track. So we added the binary operator and now we have to deal with the cast. So let's include it. ASD cast .header. We have our cast to star for this function. Create cast, you get an expression exp as your first input, and you get a Type start t as your second name, right? And you return new cast exp and t, just like that. For getters, we have expression star cast get exp a common star. And we return c dot exp for type star cast get five we get our cast and we return c dot five like so as for our setters We have something like this, and we just say this that exp is that, and a similar thing for the type. There we go. That's the cast. Now we have our const boolean. Mm -hmm. Which we are waiting to ast slash const boolean for. And then we are going to have a const boolean star create. Oh, we, we, we skipped one. Just skip the code block. 
what include AST code block code block star um create code block to get your CCS oh I forgot to add that here Because we do get that too, right? In the create ones, yes. Uh, and the reason that we get them is because we are calling these on the compiler instance, which is basically the CC. Uh, it's a good thing that, that I realized that. This would have been problematic. And we wouldn't even know what is causing it, right? So. Good thing that we just realized that. Okay, so how do you create it? Well, you just say return new code block. That's it. Okay. Now you have a getter and a setter. So we have void code block add the CMT. Install code block and statement the start stmt for which we say cv that the statements that push add back stmt just like that and as for our getter There we go, that's our getter. Now, create const bool with a cc and a boolean b. Return new const bool with the b captured inside. Now, as the getter, Truth is on it, yeah. And const set will be b dot truth will be t. Let's let's try. I think that's t. Right. That's our const boolean. We have the same thing for the const integer. Just change everything from bool to integer. That should do it. Starting from here to here, to here to here, 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 here. here. Right, so you don't you have an int here and you return a const int with what with that value you return your value I guess this should be long long first of all this should be long long as well what's your problem? value okay there you go that's our constant what what are you talking about this isn't valuable value what This isn't a variable, this is a function definition. Come on. What 
this happening void I'm not sure what's happening there. Let's, let's just ignore that because that, that's syntactically correct. I'm guessing this is Emacs playing games on me, so I'm just gonna ignore that. Next, you have define. So let's include. Yeah, it, it went away. Did you see that? Oh, okay. <laughs> it came right. Come on, what's your problem, man? Uh, const in star b and a long long p insert semicolon if i insert semicolon here is that okay oh 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 see this would be constant set and this would be constant get there we go there was a name clash okay sorry about that it was anime it was completely my fault it's okay so we have create define so we get a compile context we get a char star id we get an expression star exp and we get a type star t and we want to return a new define oh come on a new define statement with so the id should be cstr to str id exp and then t is that okay? Should be. Yes. That is completely okay. And now we can uh, create the getters and setters. So we have to do a char star define get id and we get a define star d. And we return your inner id and convert it to str to str. Like so. Okay. No, I don't want to be famous. You are going to be... And... Sorry about that, spammers. Right, so we have our define get ID and we have our type star define get type. Turn the, the type like that, and we also have our expression star define get exp. Return the dot exp just like that. Oh, uh, what's it called then? Expression. Sure. Now we need to create our setters, which are void, define, set ID, define star D, and then uh, char star ID. ID. We know that this is CSTR to STR ID, right? Define set exp e dot expression equals exp and void star define set type uh, type is dot t and then you can say b dot type would be d. There you go, that's our define. Right. Now for the directive. Directive. So include ASD directive H. Now this file is getting huge. So uh, we have a directive star 
create directive. Okay. So you, we, we have a car star ID and an AST star AST. What do you return? We return new directive with a CSTR to STR ID and the AST. Uh, CSTR to STR. So. so that's our directive, and we also need to have our getters and setters. So char star directive get ID. Oh no. I forgot CC again. There we go. So, uh, get ID would be return str to cstr d dot id I presume, and uh, ast star. Wow. So, uh, directive get ASD uh, It's called top, isn't it? Yes. Now, why directive Set ID an ID. So we say this that ID is STR. at the top to A. And these are our directives. We have already done the function call. I'm just going to include it here instead of up there, whether wherever that is. Uh, this one. Let's also move the string back down to you so that we get a unified approach. That's a string. Right. Those are function call and function call statements. We have done that. Now we have the function, which is the scariest thing I've worked, <laughs> I've worked with. Function. So let's include it first. Uh, AST function the H. Come on, man. We need we need our create function like so, and we return new function. That's all. What else do we have? Well, we have get ID. So, star star function get ID. We have return type, so type star oh what function gets turn type like so okay so this is capital T Oh, capital T, come on. What's the problem here? 
So we have to say str to csdr. Right, so that's the two gets that are in an array. And then we have uh, the statement star function get statement. So you have a function and an integer. And you return f dot statements at index i. Arg star Come on. Okay. So that's the getters of the functions, and now we have to do the setters and the adds. Let's just remove the lines here. This isn't really pretty, but you know, we have to make do with what you have, right? So void function set ID, you have your function star f and a cache star ID. And you said FID would be CSDR to SDR ID. Like so. That's it. Now, function set return type. Is it okay? Yes. Now for the add statement and add art. Just going to do that. There we go. That's that's our function. That that wasn't that bad. Bad. I mean, it was it was pretty straightforward. You just have to have to repeat everything. So, do we have variables in function directly to, or do we not support them yet? We don't support them. Yet. Let's copy all of this for function signature. I'm going to go to the there and call it function sig. Wait, function sig, function sig, and function sig. Function seek that get ID would be on a function seek, right? You get a function seek to you get a function seek. Everyone gets a function. You also get a function seek, and you also get a function seek. You also get a function seek, and you don't have a statement, so you don't get any function seek. But you get a function seek. Let's fix it here as well. So the name should be function seek set ag and function seek set return type. And do we have an ID? We do. So there. Function seek get function 
six. Oh, we don't have a statement, so. Function six get return type and function six get ID. That's function six. Uh, except for the back, which we can just do. So, Boolean function six is where. It should be bad act, not bad act. There's a typo. Right. <clears throat> so you get a function seek star f and you return f dot back. As for the setter. There we go. Now we have a function type. Okay. <clears throat> Let's take a short break. How's everyone doing? Ah, come on, chat. Uh, let's see. We're almost done, that's a good news, so I'm happy with how things are going. Um, you know, once we once we finish this, uh, then we can just work on polishing the compiler, you know, working on error reporting, because at the moment, the error reporting is not good at all. But we can, we can work on things like that, and then, then it should be done. Like, there's nothing left to do after that. Just, you know. Yeah, we just have to fight through and then get this done. Okay, so let's work on function type. I'm just gonna copy that here. Um, so instead of every function seek, we just have to write function type now. So, starting with that. Oh, come on. Function type 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 and type. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Function six set ID. Function six set return type. Oh come on. How did I get the name wrong? Function six get ID. Should be correct now, right? Looks like it. Uh, function six set ID. This should be a void. There you go. Now. <clears throat> So, function type, create function type, we do that. Char star function type get ID. We expect the function type. Let's do all of the arguments first and then we can do the rest. Okay, now uh, let's do that and say so. This should be function type set right. This should be 
function type add add I'm oh, sorry function type set return type function type set ID function oh, type is where arg and uh, function type get args right so we don't have an id in function type so we can get rid of that uh this is fine what's the i'm guessing this is returning something else so what is that args it's a type right right this is a type of course so we have to do that and here we have to set it to type we don't have set ID, so let's get rid of that. And that's a function type. Okay. Next, we have if. Uh, let me just double check. Sure. Next, we have ifs, which are easier to work with and more rewarding too. So include ast if that age. All right. So we have a if a star create if you get your cc you get your expression star exp you get a statement star sd1 and a statement a star sd2 which are new if with exp sd1 and sd2 just like that exp not epx Okay. Okay. Now for our getters, uh, expression star if get exp, you get uh, things like that, and you return i dot condition. As for statement, get sd one. You return i st1 and you copy that <clears throat> and change the one to two so they are basically the same thing right from a data access standpoint the code generation differs but you know data access they are the same thing so let's do that and then uh we have to do our setters so if set one set exp we get our if a star and a expression star exp and we say i that condition is exp what seems to be correct <sighs> right uh that is t1 with the if star i and then statement star st and let's just copy that and replace one with two there we go that's the ifs we have our import Star create import cc star cc and then a char star path. We want you to return a new import with uh, so what do we want to pass? We want to pass csdr to sdr of path. Right now we have a get path and set path, which should be easy so. For get path, uh, 
I think we call it name there for some reason. No, we call it import path. Okay. I was worried for a second. Uh, we have to convert this to a regular str, so it's going to be str to csdr, whatever that is. And import set path. There you go. That's the import. Next, we have interfaces. A lot of repetitive code in this episode. <laughs> right. This should be P. Mm hmm. Now we have interfaces. And we have an interface star creates interface, which gets a CC and a char star. And we return a new interface. So what do we return here? We return CSDR to SDR of ID. Right. Just looking at it and it seems okay. Now we have interface. Uh, sorry, we have a uh, char star interface get ID. And you have str, so you return an str to csdr i dot id, like so. That's correct. Yes. We also have a function six star interface get method, and we have our interface the star i and a char star t so what do we return we return i dot um, method of csdr to sdr of key Right? Yes. Now we have set ID and set method. So, uh, interface set ID, interface star I, and char star ID. So, I dot ID. Would be what would it be? It would be CSDR, USDR, maybe interface should be returned like this. So there we go. And for a set method interface set method we have our interface again we have a key and a function signature the star fs now we say i methods of dsdr to sdr of the key should be equal to fs yeah so this is just interfacing between two languages and there, you know it's always it's always a dreading work to do that and that's one of our aims to we are, we are hoping to write this once and then automatically convert everything else to these right 
Yeah. Right. Now we have our mem access. Mm -hmm. We have a mem access, a star create mem access. What did we get? We get an expression star exp and a char star id. And we return new man access exp and cstr to str of id. Yeah. So this is this is really starting to get us low. I'm going to disable LSD for a second. That should allow me to write faster, at least, and LSD UI as well. LSD UI mode. Okay. Yeah, this is a lot faster. Right. So we we did the, we did that, and then uh, we have to do the ID. So char star mem access get ID, and you have your mem access star m. You return str to cstr on mem ID like so. You have your expression. Which is expression star mem access get exp. Have your mem access star m and you turn in that exp. Yeah. Uh, maybe we should disable company mode too. Right. Then you know we can we can come back and enable them and do error checking. But one thing at a time. We've already written 400 lines of code in two hours and a half, and I'm already getting a little bit worked up. Okay, let's keep going a little bit more, and then we'll have a break after we get to uh, after we after we finish everything, we can get take a break, and then come back for the registration. All right, so void mem access set id, we have mem access star m and char star id. So how does this work? CSTR to str on id and there we go. Now mem access set expression. Mem access start m expression start e. This would be like that. Wow, oh, Emacs is not happy. Can I uh, can I kill C lang and C lang this one? This usually happens yeah, because the file is huge, 38 megabytes, so that's why it makes it not happy. Right, it should be a lot faster now. Right. Now, uh, LSP is disabled, let's stop doing anything. LSP global, no. Connect. Thank you, LSP. Uh, I don't know. LSP disable. No. LSP off. I don't know. Never mind. Okay. Uh, so we have the set exp on mem access, and that's everything. Next, we have a uh, name type.
You know what? Let's save it there. We are going to restart the max. Uh, I have to kill it. Oh, save this file. And let's reopen it again because it was getting a lot slower than it had to be. This usually happens when you develop C++ for a long time in Emacs, especially if you have LST mode enabled, because you know it just it's just resource heavy, you know. All right, uh, zoom in and go to Sirumi ast.ram and disable widescreen. Go to CC. Okay. So where are we? I think we're at main axis or something. Name type. Okay, jump to name type for me. There we go. Right, AST name type that header, name type star, the name type ID. Oh, uh -huh. this is C, so I have to say something like car star ID, and you return a name type which is looking uh, new name type with CSTR to SDR ID. This needs to have a header. Right. Now you have a getter and a setter. So something that I just realized again, we forgot to add a CC here. Did we do the same thing above as well? Because that is serious, yes. This would be the type of error that you don't understand why is it happening or how to stop it from happening. Okay. You know what? I'm going to write a to do here for myself. Ensure CC is in all creates. Okay. So we have our get ID and we also need a set ID. So void name type set ID. CSTR to CR ID. There we go. That's name type. Next we have pointer type. Okay. So um, we have that. Now we can create a pointer type star. Create pointer type. You get your CC and the type. Return new. Pointer type with T. Okay? Okay. We have a get type. Oh, it's inner type, isn't it? And <clears throat> 
There you go. That's the pointer type. Now we have our pre OP. Mm -hmm. Okay. So pre OP star create pre OP. We have our CC. We have a char star OP and an expression star EXP. Return new pre OP. With CSTR to STR OP and EXP. Just like that. Now for the getters and setters. So we have a car star pre OP gets OP. And we return str to CSDR PO uh, OP like so. What else do we have? Expression star POP gets EXP. Okay, right. Was value, of course. Whoever write this code, this is not consistent at all. <laughs> right. Um, I mean, it's really, it's a good code, right? The code that works is always good code. So, so far, it's good code. Now that's our pre OP, and now as for our primitive type. So this is a little bit tricky because we lays it out. We lays it out. Uh, and we probably have to do some bending backward thing to, to get this to work. So, so for primitive type, we have a create primitive type and notice how we are getting a key here okay. so uh, I don't know how to properly handle this type in um yeah we will probably need a thing to convert a, a string to type in um, and back. We do have the back. Uh, it's in primitive type parser, I guess. Yes. Right, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to just have it all in one place. We are going to have a CD string uh, type enum to string and you get a type enum key and you basically do this. Ah. And here you return type enum to string. Okay. 
okay? So that's one way, and we also need to do it the other way. No, this shouldn't be an inline function. Right. So, uh, this should be a function signature, actually. See, this is why this is what happens when you when you write code without thinking about the future. So, so yeah, right. So let's move this one to here to a C plus plus file, and we can yank the line and move it here and use it as a signature only. Right now, we need to do the the complete opposite actually. You see this one? See it? So. This is bad. <laughs> so we need to have another function that returns a type enum. Uh, type enum from string. Right. I'm just going to write it like that. I don't care. Right. And now... Um, right. So, type enum. Type in on from string, steady string key. So we just have to double check, and we can do that by writing a micro. So it's not that bad. Yank this. Okay. Now, uh, how do you want to handle this? So, let's start at the beginning of the line, record a micro, go to the next word, delete it, delete that. Insert mode if oh no no wait 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 so let's start at the beginning of the line copy our macro paste it go up remove that remove that write if key equal to delete that delete that write return delete the new line Add semicolon, go to the beginning of the next line, and stop. Now do that. Okay. That's almost good. So let's just do that a bunch of times. Writing macros. Okay. One, two, three, four. So four at sign Q to do that four more times. And now we have to surround these with quotation marks. I forgot to do that, but that's okay. Right. So UQ, jump to that, word, insert, do that, delete that, jump to this one, go back, paste. Like that. Go to the beginning of the next line. And do that a bunch of times. That's going to take care of itself. One, two, three, four, five. So do that five more times. There we go. So now, now we did that so that we can use it here. Uh, include type enum. Right. Great. So what was the function? We need to create a primitive type. Okay, so return new primitive type. So this is this expects a key and we can say type enum from a string and see a string to a string on C key. Yeah, should work. Potentially, hopefully. Now we have a set key and a get key. So the get key is a little bit weird. Primitive type get key. So you right. 
So we want to return a str to CSTR and type enum to a string and here is your enum return address of local temporary object ah uh, fuck You know what? There. This is ugly, but you know, that's only one place. And the alternative is a lot worse, so let's go with that. I don't care. Now, uh, we are doing the same thing, we, this is our setter, so if this would be pt.p equals type enum from a string cstr to str and you get your key, like so. Uh, right. That should be that should be okay. That's primitive type, and we're done with it. We don't need to think about it ever again. Now let's go to pointer value. So include ast pointer value dot h. See these these are easier things. Create pointer value. So what do we expect? We expect an expression. And we return new pointer value exp. That's it. Now we have a setter and a getter. For our getter, pointer value get the get pointer. Sorry, get pointer. We have our pointer value. Oh, see, I forgot to add cc again. God damn it. If I had a dollar for every time I forgot that, I would have exactly ten dollars. Right. So uh, we want you to return pv.exp uh, or ptr. Okay. Now the setter. And. Um, Expression. Okay, that's pointer value. That's the getter and setter. We just you know, just assign it. That's easy. Return type. Return. Um, can I copy this somehow and make it into return? Probably right. So uh. Replace pointer value with return there as well. There are two. There are two. There are also. And there are two. Right now, just say this would be exp and this would be exp. Now, um, we turn and then delete, delete. Okay. There we go. <laughs> it's not like exp. Seriously, what is it then? Is it value? This value. Okay. 
so so there's that. That's our return type. Next we have size of. Then we are almost done. I think three or four more. And then we're done. Well, we're done with this part, but yeah. So is size of lowercase o or uppercase? It's lowercase. So why did I write it uppercase here? Write it like that. Okay. So size of a star creates size of. Oh, wait a second. So this should be create pointer value. This should be. Oh, God. Create pointer value. Create return. And create. Size of. Hmm. Okay. At least we, we saw it before anything happens. Size of. So we get our CC in. We get a type, right? Yes. Return new size of with type. There you go. And you have a get type. Size of get type. For which you get a size of a star s and you return s dot type and we have a set type which is a void and has a type for us and we just say like that that's our size of we already have a string and we know that it works because we, we, we actually tried testing this one. So there you go. Now our struct. This struct is going to be relatively easy too, right? Five methods, that's fine. Only three more remaining. I'm really excited about finishing this. Uh, strike the date. So, uh, I know that I, I effed up. So, this is called a strike type. Create the strike. You get your CC. Oh, come on. So you get your CC and you get your ID. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you return a new struct type CSTR to STR ID. As for get ID, a struct gets ID you return str to CSTR. Oh, you get your struct type SRST ST that ID. Right? Yes. As for get member, so you get a defined star struct get member. And we need a int i. I think it should be long, long, but I don't care. We can change that. Um, maybe we can properly change that. Right. So, um, we have a. SD that members I okay. okay now as for set the set ID 
you get your stock type, the star ST, and a car star ID. You do ST, that ID is uh, CSTR to STR on ID, and that's it. And for a struct add member, you do this st dot members dot push at back p there you go push not push oh don't jump like that man right so these are our structs we have variable value and while and then that's it two more variable value I have to automate the next one somehow. I really do. <laughs> this is a lot of work. Um, right. So we have create variable value. You get your CC and you get an ID. And you return a new variable value CSTR to STR ID. Right. Let's double check everything. Yes. So we have a good ID. So return str to CSTR of V ready fill value right that V dot ID okay we have a set ID That ID would be CSTR to SDR ID. Now for the final one. Can't wait to see how many errors we get. Uh, so we have a create while. We have an expression start condition and a statement star st. We return new while found an st. That's it. And we have a two getters and two setters. So the first getter is a expression star while get condition. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And I don't know what the name is. Come on, help me. It is W S T. Okay. Now we have two setters while set condition. I just messed that up. So this dot condition would be con and void while set statement. Is that all? It is. Okay. Hey, Seafields, welcome back. Long time no see. 
the programming language is going great. We we have done everything we wanted to do, and we're just you know providing helper functions for ourselves. What's your new project, man? We're almost done with the ASTs, so the compiler <clears throat> is actually able to change the language. Oh, that's nice to hear. Congratulations. Right. So, uh, here's what I'm going to do. I am going to create an empty file. Okay. We are going to copy everything here to there. And I am hoping to... No, don't say anything. I'm hoping to create... Um, create macros to do this for me. Right, so here's what I'm going to do. The first micro is looking for this and then goes at the beginning add the comments delete those two jump to that and delete that okay do that do that 10 other times and more and more I guess you made a mistake here, but that's okay. Why did you change that one? That was okay. Right. So this one should be that, and that should be this. I don't say anything. It's in Python. That's great. Congratulations. Uh, Python is an okay language to work with. It's going to be slow, but it's okay. That's what matters, you know? I got some tokens on Elixir. Okay, so you're doing it properly. You want to share a link? You can just drop a link there. If you have it on GitHub or somewhere else, I can link. Alright, so... That aside... The next thing that we are going to do is this one. So, this these should be converted to some bizarre file. So, uh, we expect to convert those into each line of those into something similar to this one, right? So, compile the create address should become that essentially. And how do we do that? Well, we start on line, we record the name macro. We say, okay, um... Wait, I have to look something up first. Win to uppercase. Okay, so this would be that, yes, okay. Right, so I'm going to create a macro to do this for me because that is going to be a lot of work. And how do we do that? Well, we start by QQ. So we need to repeat the name essentially three times. So we are going to yank uh, teal a space, go to the next line, paste it once, surround it with things like that. We, we, um, there, there, go up, yank tool space again, jump at the end, add a comma. Do that, 
paste add replace do that paste and do this register all back now you want to go there replace that with a dollar sign same thing again and you want to remove that copy paste that letter go to the back insert not uh, an ampersand and go up deleting that word let's see if it actually works uh, it's okay I can fix the, the small mistakes I'll take a look just a second see films So do that five times. Mm -hmm. Do that five more times. Two more times. Just do that, do that, do that, do that, do that. Do that, do that, do that. There, there, there. There, there, and there. Okay, there, 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 there. Mm -hmm. This is going great. It took us two hours uh, to do the first part, and the second part is just taking, I don't know, 10 minutes tops? Not even that, because we're already at if, so. Okay, so do that one two do we have uh, line numbers why don't i have line numbers line number mode no okay do that five times do that three times three times oh sorry do that three times Five times. Three times. Three times. Three times. Three times. And five times, I think. Yes. Three more times. And five more times. Okay, there we go. Now I'm just going to come here, remove these two because we are repeating them here and just paste it here. We are going to have some small errors, but that's fine. Okay, this is formatting 536 edits. I did not start my project in C or C++ because I don't know those languages yet. That's fine, you can learn on your own. You can learn you know, slowly. Python is good too. I'm going to open your, your link, just give me a second to finish this one. Okay? Then we'll take a break and look at your link and then... It says that everything is fine. So close that. Okay. Right, so... Uh, what's the error here? Okay, um, so we have 8, so 8 times x, okay, 8 times x, 8 times x, mm -hmm. 
Let's do that. That. And that. This is going to create a bunch of errors, but that's fine. Um, we had function already, so just a little bit more. But this file is becoming huge. If you're already at a thousand lines, I mean it's fine. You, you don't you don't fear huge lines, but you know, seal a lot of lines. Name type, pointer type, video operation, primitive type. Pointer value. Return. Size of a string. And a struct. Variable and while and then that's it. Right. So what I want to do next, I want to um, look for C underlines. Capital C underlines. Replace the oh, uh, it's S. Capital C underline. Replace it with nothing globally. There's a person somewhere. Oh. Yes. Let's replace all of those. Okay. Now, do we have any errors? Uh, oh, I forgot to do these. Mm -hmm. Okay, create size off. There you go. Can we? Can we also? Change all of create with create and check them. No, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, 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 good. And that should be all of those. Right. Okay, compile that for me, and I'm going to take a look. <clears throat> You're probably going to get a bunch of errors. <sighs> show me, show me an example. Don't show me, show me an example of your code. Uh. Okay, we have a lot of errors there. But let's look at this. What is what's your error? What's your problem? Okay. So expect a type of specific before F call. Uh what do you mean? Oh, it doesn't know what the call is. Okay, we don't need we don't need this anymore. We don't need that anymore, and we can remove it from our roomy code as well. So go to the com oh, oh. What are you? we can remove it from our roomy thing as well. PSD, yeah, that's no longer necessary. Right, recompile. 
this Hey, that's doing it. Oh, so it's just a elixir, okay. Um so that's the first error that we got pretty early on. I thought you Okay, I thought you actually had a working language so far. Uh, so let's see it. So you have a token type, okay. And you have Elixir and you walk through the language. You have an advanced method, okay, that's good. Okay, that's good. That's a very good start. Now you have to, you can move, you can move forward, and actually run the uh, the expression that you get. I imagine that wouldn't be that hard. But this is really good. If you if you understand what you've done here, that's really good. Good job. That's good. Okay. So we fixed that one. Um, okay, I don't care about that. Um, I fixed all of them. So these are these are all for the same error. And then we jump to 350. And flicking the carriage, okay. Set type, set it T. What else? I'm sure you can figure this out. <clears throat> it's not that hard to parse numbers. This shouldn't be a pointer, this will be a normal function. We have the same problem for sets. Okay, yeah. The numbers, if they're base 10, you just take them the, the digits one by one. You multiply the first digit by 10, you know, the previous digit, and then add the next digit to it. And then repeat that again in a while loop or something. Uh... Okay, so that's a error there. I yeah, this will be defined. Okay. Okay, yeah, so so where you're parsing to see if it's a digit or not, you should actually write a loop to handle it properly. Okay, so this is concerning. C function. 
We have a get a statement. But we don't have a get a statement here. You do. What's your problem then? Oh, it's get STMT there. Right. Okay, next. Alright. What do you mean? Oh, okay. So, uh, this is a function set ID. This should be a function six, right? Okay. Yes, I meant uppercase T here. I didn't wrote this code myself, it was a macro thing, so... Of course there are going to be videos in her, so... Return time. We do have that. Oh, this is function type. Function type get return type. Okay. What else? What's the next error? We have a T as well. Next, the function type seems to be messed up. So, create function type that's fine. Function type, get return type that's fine. Get arg, these var arg, set return type, add arg, and okay, that seems to be okay to me. Let's compile it again. So for your code, C films, you need to do something like this. So when you come to here, you shouldn't yield. You should write a for statement here to try to, or a while statement, try to, to see as many digits as you can and then concatenate them together. Okay, function seek return type was not declared. Did you mean function seek? No, I meant get return type. Do I really not have set return type? I don't. Okay, what's the next error? No, that's that's a that's an error on your side. Function type. All right, this is an error in here. In function type, this should be var arg, not var gag. 
Okay. Okay. Function type set return. Uh, that's probably because I wrote something like function type. No. This is uppercase T, so there you go. Next, we have errors and primitives. So, um, I'm guessing it's a typo there, so let's go. Primitive, yeah, it's a typo here. Okay. Mm. Yeah, this would be EXPR, not pointer. Same thing here. File that again. Oh boy. Almost done. I added the new background music. What do you guys think about that? Is that okay? Oh, come on. in this one which means that there's going to be a typo in this one Compile. Can we run it though? Oh my god, it actually worked. Yes, so let me show you what we've done. <laughs> that was hard. I'm gonna fill that file and in the C lang B clear the buffer. Clear special buffer. Illusion, okay. So we need to do that and say kill region. Buffer is only okay. Kill that. Right. So here's what we've done. Uh, open the test eight. So uh, this is the code that we are working with. You can see that this doesn't look like a real program language. I'm saying hi and say sajat. Okay. And what we have actually done is we are parsing it. So we are telling the compiler at compile time that this file requires two additional parser, a high parse rule and a complex rule. So we are telling that that we have an additional parser. And then, uh, okay, you might ask, okay, how do you parse a high? Uh, it tells you that to parse a high, I need to have an ID parser and I need to see the, the words high. If I see that, it's okay. And uh, when generating, replace that high with a function call that has a printf with this inside. So the, the high, 
uh, this one basically becomes into something. Right? Next, we have say sajjad, and we have a complex rule parser for that. That looks for for ID and looks at to see to make sure that it ha it starts with say. Okay. Now, um, what happens here is that we create a printer for this one, and we say you define whatever was the rest. So the rest here is sajjad. It says you define sajjad. And that's what is happening there. Now, I'm, I'm really proud of that. Uh, I think we did a great job. Next, I want to be able to improve the parser, but I really need to take a break. This was, this was hard. What did I change? Uh, okay. So if I say, say, Rumi here, for example, and if I compile it, the compiler does its thing, and then when I actually run it, it says you define Rumi. So we are changing the code of our program inside our program. I'm really proud of that, and I think that was that was a lot of trouble, but but it was worth it. It certainly was worth it. Um. Okay, so what should we do next? I kind of want to work on the parser because I don't like this, how this is, you know, this is too crammed up. find a new rule together I want to say um, define so I don't know uh, I want to say for example okay let's get those I want to say define a and be able to say something like you know what so let's let's get an struct. So we have a, a basic struct. I'm gonna call it T, and it's only going to have an ID. And then I'm gonna say add ID T, right? Would that work? I mean, I want to, I want to write something that makes that work. So what do I need to make it work? I need to be able to access the types and fetch them. Oh, that's a lot of work. I don't want to do that. I'm lazy. Uh, but here's what I can do. Def paint t. Yeah, I should be able to do that. And I'm going to register a parser, a top parser called devprint. Devprint rule. Okay, this is this is this is an actual use case. So here we have, um, let's say, we define a T. We set its ID to let's say five, and then we say t.print. But t doesn't have a print function, and we want this statement to generate a print function based on of this struct. Okay, so that's the goal. Now, how do we do that? So we have to create a def print rule, and we do the rules by creating a struct for them. And adding two methods, one uh, parse method compiler as as a source and position as integer, and we want to return a parse result. 
So we have that. Let's do this later. So we we expect to have an ID parser. And we ask the ID parser to actually parse for us. So parse that. And if your ID, if you found an ID and uh, if you find an ID, capture the test string inside. So let's do it like this. If it wasn't, if you had a subset that said, uh, what did you say? The print. If you didn't have that parser, you can just discard it. And I'm gonna delete that one. Okay. Uh, dynamic parser. I think there's a there's a Right, so that's the parse rule. We parse the strings that start with different. Now, how do we generate the, the AST? Well, uh, we cheat by looking at another example. So uh, you generate the AST by passing the compiler and the parse token. And we expect to you to give us back an AST. Okay, so we want to create a new method for this one. So M would be C dot create. We want to create a function now. We want to create a function. Okay, and we want to return that function. So. That's the first thing that we want to do. Uh, let's... Right. So where is our uh, string? The, the, the type name. Uh, we can get it from the, our incoming token. Be like this. It's inside the field ID. Right? And we know that the, the first part begins with the def print, and we want to skip that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We want to skip eight. So we say t name is t name plus eight. Okay. So technically, this should contain the word t for now, right? Right. Um. Okay, so let's look at our AST and see what we have for C function. So we have we have set ID. We know the the name of the function is what's going to be. So it's going to be m dot str cat. Uh, it's going to be the name of the struct concatenated with dollar print. Yes. That's going to be our set ID. What's our return type? Uh, we don't have a return type, so it's unit. So we can say cc c dot create primitive type unit. Okay. What's our argument? We have one argument, uh, let's call it A. A would be C dot create arg. Let's see the create arg function. Okay, that's empty. And then we say A dot set ID. So what's the ID? The ID is self. 
And what's the type? Well, the type is a a name type. Uh, let's figure that out. But that would be our type. Uh, name type. Right. So this would be c dot create name type. The name type comes from t name whatever whatever is inside of that is actually our name. So this is our function definition, and we want to have a print statement inside of that. So yeah, right. <clears throat> We want to have a print statement inside, so we have to say m dot add a statement. I think that's correct. Yes, the other statement is correct. And let's say we have a print statement and a return statement. So the return statement we can do cc dot c dot create return with no nothing because it's a void function essentially now the print statement would be c dot create f call statement with the id of printf and add add hello from inside Let's, let's do that and then we will we'll continue. So if I compile this, parse result is not a type. Okay. Uh, I have so many typos. Register parser. Okay. Oh, come on. Let's see where it went wrong. I'm guessing, I am guessing we made a mistake in one of these. But we shall see. We shall see in just a second. Give it time. Invariant of size 8 in F call. Address whatever is not stacked or malloced or recently freed. So function call line 18. Let's see what's there. Line 18. The arguments. Do you even have any argument? Oh, right, right, right. <sighs> we can't do it like that. We have to uh, delete inside the parentheses. We have to have a constant string from this. Create C a string and then say set value to this one and then pass that. Right, because no, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, we are dealing with AST here. You can't just pass a string, okay? Come on! Oh, it worked. Can find method print in struct T, and that is because we, we, we can't. Um, what if I did like this and instead say? T underline print T. Uh, 
end function t underline print. So what, what function are you creating then? Set the name of function to this one. And then m dot get id. Oh, capital T, of course. So it compiled and it says hello from inside. Now let's make it to so we can access ID. We can't we can't create we should be able to create methods. I'm, I'm going to work on that in a second, but give me a second. Um, so, we are saying hello from inside. That is meaningless. Uh, let's say... Let's instead say t... No, I, we don't know what, what it, it actually is. So, it's still cat. So, this... The name... To go here and the name is uh, T name and then it should be concatenated with something else T name that ID equals dollar s and we add that next we want to add another act a member access act the member access would be c dot create mem access. I want to say let's look at its definition. Mem access, right? So we have to give it an expression and an ID. So for the expression, we use a variable, and for the ID, mem access. So the ID would be that ID again. Uh, and that would be the variable, or rather, the self. Now, we self would be c dot create variable value self. So we are saying at self dot id to the argument of printf that is going to print whatever that name that id is to uh, the that's what we're saying. Let's see if it actually works. Uh, why? Oh, missing this one. Okay. Compile that. It compile. P I D equals five. Uh, I wanted to do something like that. I forgot to do that. Let's try it again. Great. Now, to actually define it as a method, I'm not, you know what? <laughs> we've, been, we've been working on this for too long to lose this information. Added all ASTs. Right. Now, we should be able to query the system for structs. I think. That, that makes sense, right? So, uh... Here at the end, I'm going to say compiler that get a struct. So I expect to give a a string and get a C a struct back, right? A pointer to one back. Right? That should be doable. We just have to define the function here. In this mess, so uh, let's let's add it to near a struct actually. So we want to register a callback from compiler dollar get a struct it's compiler dollar get a struct replace 
and you access some function called get a struct. Uh, let's say compiler get a struct. Okay, now we just have to define that function. And I'm just going to go here. Structs, okay. So, a struct type a star, get a struct, cc whatever, car star id. Now, um, what we want to do, we want to get no, look up the str to str by b. So if you didn't find anything, return zero. Now, if you did find anything, uh, your type is actually a struct type, so we can return n dot type. Okay. Oh, sure. Uh, yes. Compile this one. Now, here we are doing all of that. Uh, so this should be dollar print, okay? Because members are type name dollar print. Oh, fuck. oh yeah, of course. Dynamic cast to a struct type star, and if you couldn't cast it to a struct type, it's not a struct. So who cares? Okay, so now here uh, we def we define this one. Um, compiler get a struct. Okay. I guess it's fine that's not complaining, right? Yeah. Sure. So uh we defined that one. Now we, we can actually get our struct. So this struct would be C dot get a struct. What a struct are we looking for? We're looking for a struct name T name. Whatever is inside the variable. Now um ast the drum now we need to be able to define a new method here <laughs> we aren't doing that yet so how does method definition work in a strike that header we actually have a method there great show me a method Okay, so we can say uh, add method, right? So see a struct that add method. So what you need to have, you need to have the CC and the method. So this would be you need to pass in the compiler and the C. Method. Do we actually have that? We don't. What? Did we seriously skip method? Okay, back to it, I guess. Um, name access, yeah, we skip method. Wow. So C method is a struct. You have your compiler that create method, blah, blah, blah. So what do you have? You have the struct name, the ID. Okay. The method name, which is a string. Oh. 
this is also a string and you have a function yeah which is a c function In return, you get a C method. Right. Uh, I'm not going to do anything else. I'm just going to do that, and then I'm writing a to-do here to come back and complete this slide. Okay. So here, uh, we don't need to, to get the struct directly. There's that. So replace all ends with ah that's fine. So we say method is actually c the create method. So the struct name is t name. The method name is print, and the function would be n. And here we are going to return method. That is going to be our code. Now uh, for the struct. So we are going to add this function and the other. Right. So let's go to the CC file again. Method star. Oh, it's a void, right? It is a void. It should be like this. That should be like that too. Right. Units. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, void a struct add method, which also has a compiler and a method star m. Move it up here. So you uh, also you also get your struct type, of course. So we want to say add method there's your cc there's your method done what sure so that's that i have to register it as well sure so next to this struct here can i copy this one and then replace member with method should be able to work. Yeah. Okay. Don't need to call directly if you are returning method as an AST. Okay. Here's that. Yeah, well, it's another to do, but that's fine. okay. So next, we have the create method. So let's go to mem access and then add methods here. Method include ASD. We also don't have method call. Oh my god. I think we just skipped all of the M's. Method and method called here. Yeah, we do have name type though, so that's fine. We don't need to do it right now, but we just something to happen. Here we go for Frazier Fed. Thank you, Mr. Redmakers. How are you today, man? You've been quiet in the chat. I am really glad that this is working and I hope to get this done. My plan for next week is to create a package manager. Wow, oh, yeah. It would be to create a package manager inside Groomy, and then we can actually start doing something special. My next goal would be to start writing OpenGL inside Groomy, but you know, that that's going to take a 
in more than at least a few weeks. Right. So, how do we create the method? We have our create method function that captures a CC, a char star S name, a char star M name, and a function star F. And we return new method CSTR to STR S name, CSTR to STR M name, and F. That's that. Let's register it. Oh, come on. Man, access. Right. So we want to register it here. So we want to replace that with create method replace. Oh, it should be compiler, not method. That counts. Compiler. Compiler create method. Good. Right. And we want to replace it with at sign create. This should work. Right, and while that is working, let's come to test eight. So we did that, and now we we are actually creating a method, so we should be able to say t.print. At least I hope so. Right, there's a there's a possibility that this is going to go wrong, but you can see. The E counts before A. Second part, okay. Why? Thank you. I appreciate that. We already passed uh, a thousand views. That's nice. We had a thousand and four views, so I'm glad that happened. <sighs> Guys, do you give me feedback? Uh, is the music okay? Do we need to change that, lower the volume, or anything? It takes a long time to finish the... Oh, so... Address is not stacked or my load or recently free. I'm guessing we are returning something wrong here. The CC. No, let's just be okay. Because this is a... Okay. Source 63, that doesn't have anything to do with what we are doing here. Line 63. Okay, so... That makes zero sense.
I don't know why this is happening. Oh, I know why. Uh, so it is parsing this one and it is returning something that it doesn't understand what it is. That is probably because method is... Oh, method is a second. That went nowhere. Um, let's, let's double check the generation here. So we are... Can I double check to see if the method is there actually? Interf method is this. Just the address. Oh right, 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 right. We don't we should return a, a pointer here. That's why it is causing trouble, right. worked and if I actually run it there you go the idea is wrong but that's okay that's fine uh, I know why it is wrong actually it is wrong because here we are past we are saying that the first type so we say we have an ag of this type and you say that's your type but that's not the type the type is actually a Pointer type to that, so create pointer type to T, <clears throat> right? Create pointer type, yes. Compile again, run it. Okay, uh, you should print five, not that number, whatever that is. Okay, so let's see. Let's see what's happening. Oh, uh, you know, we can actually we can look at the generated code. Okay, so t print t is a pointer to self. No, okay. Oh, right, right, right. We don't need the extra argument because we are saying you are a pointer, so. So it can figure that out. So we don't need to even do this. We don't. We don't need to put any ags because when we say this is a this is an argument, it figures out that it has to add a pointer to that type as the first argument. So we don't need to do that anymore. Let's see. There you go. Excellent. Wow, so we just we just wrote just look at the beauty of it. We just wrote def print on T. I know this isn't we are we can't deal with the spaces right now in the um parsers, but we'll add that. But we just said def print t and uh, it added a print function for it. Now that's that is really good. So the only thing that I'm worried about is that we cannot return more than one argument in there, more than one AST in there. So I need to. Well, yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Wow. Let's commit this one. So what did we do? We added AST methods. Right. So here's what I'm going to do. I need to take a short break. Uh, it's been a long while since I did that and I will be back in a few minutes.
All right. Uh, so let's take this a step further. Actually, you know what? Let's let's finish the methods because you know they are lacking things there, and then we can um, we can work on the parsers to be able to parse you know, better things than this. Okay, um, and you know it's, we're just hoping to get something done. There's no shame if we get tired in the middle or stop doing it halfway there for this stream. We, did, we got a lot done, so I'm happy with that. Right, so we have a get a struct name. Um, you don't have anything, and you return a, a string. We also have a get method name that is the same. Oh, this should be like that. This should be like that. Right. Next, we have a get function. So you do that. And then there is setter. So set a struct name, which is a name of a string. Right? And set. Oh, come on. Method name and a set function. Right. So we have to define these. Um, let's do them in here. Methods. Uh, right. So we have our create, and now we can say. Uh, car star method gets a struct name. You get a method star and you return str to cstr and the uh, method name. We copy the same thing for Wait, uh, this should be a struct name. Right. I, I got confused because it had method at the beginning, but you know, that's fine because we are defining this on the method struct. Now, the function returns a function star method get function. Oh. Uh, come on. Method star m and return m dot f. Like so. As for the setter objects, method setter struct name, you get your method star m. You have a char star name. M dot the struct name would be. What do we want to name it? We want to name it uh, CSTR to STR name. And it's not a void star, it's actually a void. Yes. Now the same thing for, for method. Right, and that. That's fine, and method set function. So this time we get a method star m and a function star f, like so. Now we have to register those, which we can do this somewhere down there. So let's reduce uh I'm using semicolon, okay. Reduce Hello film uh C films. So the get 
a struct name let's just copy that again and what's the callback the callback is method get struct name yes Copy that two, three, four, five, six times. Right, and uh, so this should be get method name. This one as well. This one as well. This should be get function. Right, yes. This one as well, and this one as well. I guess I can just delete those, repeat those, and change the get to s. So set method name, set function, and same thing here. Set function, set function, set function. Like that, like that, and like that that should be our method let's let's test it real quick before we go any further Okay, so do we get any weird errors if I do that? No. That's fine. We didn't use them, but if there was a name mismatch here, uh, we would get... Uh, this. No. We would get some sort of error uh, in the LLVM, because you know, LLVM doesn't know how to handle those. Right. So that's the method. We are also missing method call. So let's add that here as well. Oh my god, that's a lot of things. But we only need to set these two, right? Yes. Okay, so method call. method call is an empty struct like before we have a compiler that create method call the constructor is empty so we keep it we keep it empty here as well and we had a get exp so you don't provide anything and you get back a C mem access. We have a set exp where you give it a, a star mem access and you don't expect anything in return. Right. You have a get ag, you give it an index, and you get back a C expression, and you have a add ag in which you give it an index and a C expression, and you get nothing back. So that's the signature. Come here. Let me go to the method part. Yeah. The method call. Let's first include it. I'm gonna get count here. Right. 
we know the drill, right? There's nothing weird going on here. So you only get CC and you return you method all like so. To be honest, I'm kind of surprised that the names aren't clashing, you know. Uh, method call is surprisingly act after mem access, and this is happening for all of the types. So that's good news. Um, otherwise, we, have, we had to jump through loops to make that work. Right, so method call gets exp, gets a method call a star mc, and returns mc dot exp. So the expression also gets an integer i and its return adds i and the name is get i. Now there's setters. So this would be come on avoid. You will give me a mem access a star m, and I'm gonna say mc that exp would be m, and this is going to be a come on set, right? This is going to be star e inside the void mc x dot push underline back e there you go now all we have to do is register these methods and then you're done Like so. You know what? Let's just copy that here. So it's a method call. We have a set exp. So let's repeat that two more times, three more times, I guess. So we have get exp, I'm just gonna use a mouse because I'm getting tired. And this should be get, this should be get, what did I do? This should be get, get and get. This is the G, okay. And replace that with G as well. Right. Those are okay. And then here we have to say um it's add like so. And here we have to say, let's get ag. This is the add ag, right? Yes. Um, add ag and then uppercase a. What did we call it? Method call.
Padark and yeah, that should be correct now. It is correct. Great. So let's see if we get any errors for that. If not, we are going to work on the parsers. How long have we been doing this? Four hours and thirty-seven minutes. Oh my god. Okay. Do you run or do you get the shenanigans? You do run. Nice. Okay. Okay. Uh right. So uh the next thing that I want to work on here. So we have these add and set you know what? Let's do that before I mess up anything up. Because I want to do something that is probably break they're going to break break at least a few of our codes. At the very least. So you see this set and add. Now these functions were there before we had all of those specified set and add. And to be honest, I kinda want to delete them, and I'm going to delete them. Okay, so let's start by deleting those. So we don't really have an AST anymore. See, not here. May we might have some here, but no, we don't have an AST anymore. So, so that's completely correct. Now here, anything that starts AST dollar sign is two methods. You know, they should go. So the AST add callback and the set callback, they should go. Which in turn means that we have to go to our AST. And we should delete these two methods. Now I'm not sure if it's going to give me a bunch of errors or not, but it should. Exactly. And we are going to go through, well, I guess I can do this instead of torturing myself, right? So I can just move through them one by one and delete any of any sign of those. So the address, set and add, they are going to be deleted. We are going to delete these two, okay. Ag, set and add are going to be deleted. Now, we did this originally because we had to, but now that we have a better option, there is no point in keeping them. Especially since we don't really have a use case for them anymore, and they're just, you know, they're going to make it harder to be backward compatible in future. So let's just let's just get rid of everything that we can. Okay. And there as well. I mean it's a lot easier than what we've been doing, so I'm not complaining. Um, right.
Oh. Oh, you forgot to add method call statements. Oh god. I just realized that method call is not alone. So I used to run. It's just like function call segments only is for methods, right? I'm glad we, we moved to the new system because this would be really hard to work with. You know, just imagine you are working with the strings. Imagine something going wrong, right? There, there's no possible way to to find out where you made a typo. Is it in the compiler code? Is it in your application code? Just it would have been a nightmare. Now I think this is going to break a few things, and I, uh, in particular, function definition, because we are using the, the set logic elsewhere too. But I am going to fix that right after this. Almost done, we are at main type. Okay, pointer type. The other pointer type. Uh, pre oak. We also need to add a post though, but um, at some other time, I guess. Primitive type, the other primitive type, pointer value. Well, we have a lot of ASTs. This pointer value, okay, return. Almost there. Size of size of statement. That's fine. A string.
Okay. And that's the last one of them. Okay, let's come back to see what kind of errors we get, because I'm, I'm sure there are at least a couple. I know one of them would be in the function parser, one of them is probably either in method parser or in the method definition. I'm not sure which one it would be. Yeah, define parser, okay. So you know you don't need to do that anymore. Attempt that ID just do this. Same thing over here. Wanted to do okay, that's just bizarre, you're just wasting a lot of memory that way. Right, and uh, any other error? On this one. Yeah. So f that id would be this one. Please compile. Let's see what happens. Okay, sorry about that. Right, uh, so... So, um... What happened was it actually compiled, so I'm glad that that happened. And... <clears throat> we got rid of that bad logic. <laughs> that would have been a disaster to actually deal with if we, if we went that way. But I wanted to, you know, try and see if it's actually going to work and then... move up to the current system that we have, because this is a lot harder to implement than the previous one. But you know, it has a lot of other benefits. Right, now I want to, uh, let's add, let's add the method call thingies that we forgot to add. So ast.rom. I mean, they're just, they're exactly the same thing, right? They're just method call, call the statement. So I'm just going to copy all, all of this. And then change them to method call stmt. Create method call stmt returns a method call stmt. Uh, you have a get ex get expression. You have a get argument. You have a set expression. You have a add argument. There you go. That's that. And uh, as for the implementation. Just 
going to copy all of this. So, method call stmt, create method call stmt, you. Okay. So, how do you get it? Well, like that. Like this, like so, and there, 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 there. Okay, so that's everything. Now, uh, the problem, the the problem is going to be actually with this one. So. I think they have an inner EMC or something. Yeah. So we just have to do this MC and then MC. Because method call set is just a shell, it doesn't have anything inside of it. There you go. Right, now to actually register those, mm, method call. Right, so let's copy all of these and we are going to paste them here. Name them method call STMT. Oh, on DL, okay. One STMT there. Hmm. And then here as well as here and one here and here. And here, and here, and here, and here. Right. Now, method call, this would be stmp, get exp. Oh, oh my god. Uh, so this should be, one of them should be set. This should be set. Set, and set. Set, and set. Right. I guess so. Have I made the same mistake somewhere else too? Hope not. Right. Compile that. Okay, so there we go. That's the. Uh, actually, let me want to see if everything's okay. AST is not a type. Jesus. So, uh, I think it's in here. But we are returning AST by mistake. We should be returning CAST. Let's just double check. Yes. So, we should be returning compiler AST. Or CASD here as well and here as well okay do that say false great why are we getting a say false 
Or rather, where are we getting the set pulse? I'm guessing there's a function that we don't... Yeah. More than likely there's a... Jesus Christ. Uh, there's a function that we are trying to access and that doesn't exist. I was afraid that this, is, this was going to happen. So let's go and find that. So, uh, <clears throat> starting from the ones that we created recently, we have create method called statement that is there. I'm just going to search for it and then... No. Right. Can I disable golden ratio? No, uh, it's called golden ratio mode. Right. And then... Have equal sizes and also do this, please. Thank you. There as well. Okay. So, um, go away. We have create method call stmt. Create method call stmt. That's fine. We have method call stmt set exp. Oh, right. There we go. There we go. There we go. That was it. That was easy. Also there. The field. I'm glad that we, 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 get, we did get those errors. Now, if it works, I would be more confident that you know things are actually working. All right, run this. Yes. Remove okay. We remove get set AST and the added method called statement. Push that. Nice. Now let's get to the real thing. So uh, the parser. So we did, we did do something like this, def print t, I don't like that, I want to be able to say def print and then t, you know, separately. <laughs> That's the level of expectation that I have. And um, to be able to actually say that, we need to be able to parse it. Now, we are actually parsing things here. We are, you know what? Let's start with something simpler. Why am I starting with the hardest one? That's what we say. Okay. So, yeah. We call it this complex rule, but it is the simplest one. So, the way we parse it is we look for an ID, we capture that ID. And I want to be able to say something like, so uh, I'm going to rewrite this function com completely. So we have an ID parser. We expect a high keyword, which is, you know, ID parser, CS position. And then we expect an ID from this one, which would be ID parser that parse, parse after high Keyboard. So I want to be able to say the second one, right? This function doesn't exist now, so we need to add that function. And then the way to do it 
uh, would be to say, okay, ID that right now, if you had the ID, I keyword would be I keyword that get your ID. We have to fix those two, but you know, in our time, one one thing at a time. So this would be a string, and if it is not equal to I, set ID to zero. Okay. Yes. <sighs> mm -hmm. I kind of like that. Now we don't need this anymore. And uh, and this was actually saved, All right? All right? And now when you're dealing with this one here, we don't need to do that anymore because you know the name is just from the beginning and. We are returning the second ID here. So here when we actually get the value, we get the value of the latest one. So that's fine. Right. So all we have to do is define parse after and then we are going to revisit this to make it better as well. So we have parser dot parse after And we have what do we have here? We have a PR a stop parse result. And we expect to get a parse result out. This is basically the operation that we have. Yes. Oh, we passed the five hours. This is officially the longest stream we've done. Right. So, now for the definition. Get parser callback. Right, so here's how we're handling it. We are returning a pointer to parse results. And that's fine. Uh, we want to do the same thing. So we're going to say parse result a star parser parse after. So you get a parse rule, a star PR, and you get a parse result, a star P. And basically, you want to say this one after PR. And if there was no answer, return zero. Otherwise, return. Let us do this. As a precaution, if there was no parse result to begin with, it returns zero. Okay. Now here, instead of void star, I want to say return parse result star because come on. That should be okay. Yes. 
Now, I want to do two things. Uh, first of all, let's find parser, parse, callback. Okay, I want to change the name of this one. So, remove the callback. It's parser the parse. That's it. And it is a it's for parser. So you know. Okay. Now register another callback parser dollar parse after come on copy that one I do expect this to work, but there could be a lot of things could go wrong, so let's not get our hopes high. Yeah, we get a segmentation fault because why? Oh, I know why. I kind of forgot to do what I wanted to do. So here, uh, we don't want to turn whatever that is. Uh, ends is actually a parse result, and we want to right. So ends is actually a tuple token, but right? we know that for sure. And I want to access its second, its second member. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Oh, there should be a token there. Do that again. Yeah, because we want to. Because in the code, we are accessing the ID directly. Uh, it, it would be very hard to deal with token with tuples in Rumi at the current stage. So we just assume that we are getting the the, the second item, right? So we have to handle this in, in this side. OK. Exactly as before, except now we actually have a space there. See, we now have a spacer and it is able to pause that. So let's do the same thing for the printer. The print. So I am going here and I'm saying that where do I want to say it? in the parser? Where is the parser? Oh, it's here, right. So we get the keyword. Let's call it KW. And we expect to see the ID after that. Now, if it was a thing, if the ID was a thing, make sure that keyword is actually correct. So KW.getID and convert that to a string we expect it to be equal to def 
print right if it wasn't forget you had an id do that now when you're actually doing things you don't need to oh, come on when you're actually doing things you don't need to move eight characters forward because you already had your string there so let's see if it works now should be nothing has changed right it does yes all right so add a parse after now the real nightmare the real nightmare here would be to deal with all the different parsers that we have. Because we don't have one or two parsers, we have we have this many parsers. You see? There are lots. Let's take a break. Anything you guys want to talk about? Any interesting projects over the weekend or you know during the last week? No? Okay, um... Let's see. So, I want to be able to do this. And, uh, also this one. That seems okay. Right. Um, we could also take a break right now and then come back tomorrow to do the rest of it. But yeah, it's been a lot of fun. And I guess now is a good time to actually stop this. Thank you all for thank you guys for coming. I really appreciate your support. Uh, hopefully, we can see each other again. Oh, by the way, uh, I got approved and I added this. this one. <laughs> I know that that sounds dumb, but you know, uh, it should be somewhere. Here. Yeah, this is. Um, I think that this looks fun. Right. All right. See you guys. Uh, next stream. Have a great day. Bye-bye.